everyone, this is Patrick at Filmlight, and in this video tutorial we will be looking at Dolby Atmos support in Baselight, check out the improved audio settings when creating IMF packages and IMF supplemental packages, and finally a quick look at improved track arrangements for QuickTime movie exports. You are now able to import Dolby Atmos ADM broadcast wave files and IMF IAB audio files into Baselight. The audio can be presented and monitored in any one of the following configurations. Stereo, 5.1, 7.1, 5.1.4 and 7.1.4. The audio can be exported as a Dolby Atmos track as part of an IMF package, an audio-only IMF, a standard WAV files, or as audio in a movie file. Dolby Atmos files are imported into Baselight via the Scene Audio menu in the Scene Settings view. Open the Dolby Atmos menu and set the Type menu to File, and then select the Dolby Atmos source file. Once the Dolby Atmos file has been selected, we move to the audio panel of the menu to set up how we will monitor the Dolby Atmos content. The monitoring output will determine the source channels available for export to WAV files or movie audio tracks. Use the Type drop-down menu and set it to Dolby Atmos. This sets the selected Dolby Atmos file as the audio source. You will see an output menu. Using this menu, you can specify the monitoring output. If you have the audio waveform view visible, the display will update as you change the output. Note that setting type to another source will not affect the creation of the Dolby Atmos tracks, just the monitoring and source channels available for creating standard audio tracks. In order to export the audio as a Dolby Atmos track as part of an IMF package, go to the Render view and in the Audio section of the IMF export, add a track or select an existing track. Change the codec for that track to Dolby Atmos. The channels will be set to automatic. You can now create the IMF package containing the Dolby Atmos audio track. In order to review the new IMF package that was created, I'd recommend that you create a new scene and make sure that the working color space is set to that of the IMF package you are reviewing. Add the IMF package CPL to the timeline from Flux Manage and then in the audio panel in the scene audio, set the type to file or movie and load the same CPL that was added to the timeline. You can then use the output format menu to choose the monitoring output for the Dolby Atmos track. In cases where you require a Dolby Atmos track as well as a 5.1 or stereo track, there are two options. First, you can use the monitoring output from the Dolby Atmos file as the source for a second audio track. Add the track and set the required channels. The second option is when there is a requirement to use standard WAV stem files for additional tracks. In this case, the audio type in scene settings is set to stems and the 5.1 or stereo stems are loaded as usual. In the render view, add the additional tracks and set the channels to match the audio source. The audio track display in the IMF creation settings has been improved. When exporting a supplemental IMF, all the relevant audio tracks are now shown in the comparison view, making it clear 
which tracks are to be added, removed or preserved. Here are a few examples just to illustrate the changes. This is the master of an IMF package export containing a Dolby Atmos track. Note the track in the list. Next, we will create a supplemental IMF package. I'm going to remove the Atmos track and replace it with a new 5.1 track, as well as a stereo track using stems. Using the comparison tool, you will see the new tracks that will be part of the IMF supplemental package. Turning the Atmos track back on and setting it to preserve will also reflect in the comparison tool. Remember, when doing supplemental audio, the requirement is to replace the entire audio track. You are not able to replace single stems in a 5.1 track, for example, or replace a small section of audio. Finally, we have added the following improvements to track arrangements when exporting QuickTime movie types. 5.1 and 2.0 have been added as a channel selection when exporting a QuickTime format. This will encode the 5.1 and stereo channels as two separate interleave tracks in the movie file. You can use the Edit Current Layout to change the channel names. Now, in cases where discrete number channels are required, you can easily set the track names to discrete numbered tracks. After selecting the number of channels, set the encoding to discrete to create separate audio tracks for every channel in the exported movie. Use Edit Current Layout to set the channel names. Set the name of your first channel to Numbered Discrete. This will be channel 0. And you will be prompted to name all the remaining channels. Thank you for sticking with me. I hope this has been a useful tutorial. As always, remember to read the release notes. Until next time. <music>